الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أن أصيح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد حدثني جماعة من الشيوخ بإسناد كل إلى سفيان بن عيينة عن عمر بن دينار عن أبي قابوس مولى عبد الله بن عمر عن عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this tremendous hadith that those who show mercy they will be shown mercy by the most merciful Be merciful to those who are in the earth and the one who is above the heavens he will show you mercy This hadith is tremendous bila shak wa bila raib as the ulama they mentioned, ذلك بأن العلم رحمة نتيجته رحمة في الدنيا وغايته رحمة في الآخرة. This is because knowledge is mercy. The result of knowledge is mercy in this world, and the ultimate goal of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter. We continue going over the tremendous book by the Fadl al Shaykh al Imam Imam al Nawawi. Rahimahullah Ta'ala We have reached the 16th hadith And that is An Abi Hurairah Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhu On the authority of Abu Hurairah Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhu Anna rajulan Qala lil nabi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That a man said to the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Awsini Give me advice Give me a comprehensive Good advice Faqala Nabi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said in response To this request La tawbah Do not become angry Do not become angry so the questioner, he repeated his question over and over, or a number of times. And the Prophet he said each time he repeated his question, give me a good and comprehensive advice. The Prophet he said, do not become angry. And this is typically how this is translated. Do not become angry. But bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, we will come to see what is the meaning and that in which we are being called not to do or commanded not to do as relates to anger. وَقَالَ الْحَافِظُ شَيْخَ عَبْدُ الْمَحْسَنِ الْعَبَّادِ الْبَدَرِ حَفِظُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He mentions, he says, قال الحافظ في الفتح that the great memorizer mentioned in الفتح and who he's referring to here is الإمام الحافظ ابن حجر رحمه الله تعالى the explainer of فتح الباري now فتح الباري فتح الباري this is the explanation of صحيح Al Bukhari. So when we go back to this hadith, this hadith is on the authority of Abu Hurairah. Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Rahimahullah, uh, Ta'ala, he's bringing a quote from Imam Ibn Hajar in Fath Al Bari, which is the explanation of Bukhari. So this hadith is on the authority of Abu Hurairah. The hadith is as you heard it. 
So now where is this hadith collected? Any takers? Uh, huh? Bukhari. Nah, Al Bukhari. It's collected in Al Bukhari, and hence why Al Hafiz ibn Hajar he uh, comments on this particular narration in his explanation of Sahih Al Bukhari. He mentions, he says, Qala Al Khattabi. He mentions, he says, Al Khattabi. He said, Ma'na. That the meaning of the statement of the Prophet which is typically translated as do not become angry. Don't become angry. He said the meaning of this is and I want you to, to, to have these, inshallah, ta'ala, those taking notes, to have these in your notes. Because this is an aspect of the meaning. An aspect of the meaning of la right? It means avoid the causes that bring about anger. So avoid those things that will make you angry. And this is what the Prophet uh, means when he, say, when he says la Do not become angry. Meaning avoid those things that will make you angry. Avoid those things, those causes that will cause you to become angry. And do not expose yourself to those things which will incite your anger. Do not expose yourself to those things that will incite your anger. Man. So again, do not watch out for those things that make you angry and stay away from them. Right? Avoid those things that are going to make you angry. Do not expose yourself to that which will incite your anger. So in other words, do not put yourselves in situations that you feel will incite your anger. Yeah. Inshallah ta'ala, I want you to keep these meanings in mind. And the reason why he mentioned that this is the meaning of La Thugba, do not become angry, he says, but as far as anger itself, as far as anger itself, for la then there doesn't come a prohibition from anger itself. It doesn't come the prohibition meaning that do not feel anger. Never get mad. Never be angry. This is not what it means. Why? Because anger is a natural affair. Right? This is something that is natural. And natural meaning la yazulu min al jibilna that it will consistently be a part of human the human experience. In other words, you cannot prevent yourself from ever feeling anger. This is an emotion that you have no control over as far as feeling it. Now, there are going to be certain things that are going to make you angry. Now, so we're not being called to never feel anger. Why? Because that is beyond our capability. It is not possible that an individual will never feel angry. So that's not the meaning. But the meaning is avoid those things that will incite your anger. Do not expose yourself to things that will incite your anger. Do not expose yourself to situations that will make you mad. Do not expose you. Do not put yourselves in predicaments that may be upsetting. Now, this is one shade of the meaning. Why? Because anger is a natural feeling in which an individual, an individual, he does not have the control or she does not have the control to repel the emotion itself. 
Also, Sheikh Uthaymeen, he mentions that what is meant by la tabbah, it means once you become angry, to control yourself. That once you become angry and you feel anger, then you control yourself. Ma'am, then you control yourself. This is this quality of controlling oneself when angry, this quality of avoiding situations that will cause your anger, it brings about so much benefit in this world and in the next. It brings about so much benefit in this world and in the next. Ma'am, and inshallah ta'ala will come to reflect on some of these benefits. Ala um, kullin. Uh, the Shaykh he goes on and he says, يعني, أيضاً, He said, and he also said, ibn, uh, atin, ibn atin, He mentioned, That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he combined in his statement, do not become angry, meaning avoid those things that will make you angry, situations that will make you angry, so on and so forth. And control yourself once you become angry. This is what is me. This is what is meant, right? And this is a reminder why it is incumbent upon us that we learn Arabic, because in order to say all of that in a translation is difficult. And this is why it's translated typically as "Do not become angry," right? But the meaning of it is as we heard. So it's incumbent that what that one we learn Arabic and two that we study, because just knowing Arabic with them within itself, it will not. Grant you everything. It's a tool, but then we still have to seek knowledge so that we understand properly the meanings of the statements of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that we understand properly the meanings of the statements of Allah subhanahu wa taala inside of the Quran. Damn. So all of the good of the of the dunya and the akhirah they are found in this statement. Control yourself when you become angry and avoid those things that will incite your anger. لأن الغضب because anger يؤول إلى التقاطع because anger it leads to severing of ties نعم the severing of ties and the breakup of situations and relationships ومنع الرزق and ومنع الرزق and the prevention of uh, provisions and the prevention of provisions نعم meaning that Relationships will be severed. Provisions will be withheld, and you know, a person will lose out on provisions. Why? All because of anger. وَرُبَّمَا آلَ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤَذِّيَ الْمَغْبُوبَ عَلَيْهِ And it may even reach the point where you harm the person that you're angry with. The anger it may reach a point that you harm the person that you're angry with, either physically or verbally. That you harm the person. Who is the source of your anger, or the person in which you take your anger out on them? Ma'am, فَيَنْتَقِصُ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الدِّينِ And that will decrease an individual's religion. That will hurt your religion. Anger can hurt your religion. Ma'am, anger can hurt your religion. Anger could adversely affect your iman. Ma'am. It could affect your iman. <coughs> Person, they say, how? Kaif. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Sibab al-Muslim fisq, wa qitaluhu kufr." Verbally abusing a Muslim is a great heinous sin. If you verbally abuse a Muslim, you use your words to hurt a Muslim, hurt their feelings. Verbally abuse them, cuss them out, so on and so forth. Now, the Prophet ﷺ said, "This is fisq. This is a heinous, despicable sin." Now, why would you verbally abuse a Muslim? Because what? Because you're angry. Because you get mad. You get mad at them. You avoided the situation that will cause your anger. Uh, excuse me. You 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 neglect it from avoiding a situation that will cause your anger, and or you did not what and you did not control yourself when you were angry. You didn't avoid the the conversation. You allowed it to go on. 
Naam, then this is very dangerous. How many marriages have been ended because people keep talking? Naam, how many marriages have come to an end because people keep talking? The argument goes and everyone keeps yelling and going 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 and then Shaitan come and he whisper and he say, if she say one more word, divorce her. She say something else, one more thing, divorce her. Then she don't stop. He divorce her. He don't stop. And they keep, yeah, a lot of marriages ended like that. The poet, he said, لَيْسَ لِكُلِّ قَوْلٍ جَوَابٌ وَجَوَابُ مَا تَكْرَهُ سُكُوتُ He said that not every statement has an answer. Not every statement necessitates a reply. And sometimes the reply for what you don't like is just to be quiet. Sometimes the reply for what you don't like is just to be quiet. Why? Because someone said something, you didn't like it. So at this point of the, at this stage, something was said, you didn't like it. It got you mad, right? I want you to follow me now. In this scenario, at this point, you are the only one upset. You're mad. So the best, a lot of times is what? It's just to be quiet. Because if you're quiet, what happens? It ends there. You're quiet. You're mad, it ends there. You walk away. Right? Then what happens is when you walk away, it ends. That's it. It's over. And then like many things, like many things that make us mad today, when we reflect back on them a week, two, three, four, a month, two months from now, right? Sometimes it seems silly. How many times you have argued with an individual was very mad at the, at, at, in the point of the argument, very intense argument, only to reflect back on the argument sometime in the future to realize, and you forget. I forget why I was even mad. I just remember being very mad. But why? I don't remember right, right now like that. I don't remember. Which is an indication that what? That the thing that caused you to be mad really wasn't that important. Because had it been important, life or death, so on and so forth, then you will remember a month, two later, a year later, two years later. You'll remember how many times you don't control your anger so that you don't control what you say and it caused to uh, yani, uh, a split in friendship, a split in relationship, a split in marriage and so on and so forth. Only years go by later and you reflect back on it with the individual and, and neither of you could come back to what was even the source of that. Why were we even that angry? And you may laugh at it and say, we were, we were silly, we were foolish. Man, this has happened. How many people get divorced? Because of stuff like this, and then after what, after some time, get married again, because they can't even figure out why was we even that mad at each other. I don't remember. I just know you said this, and then I said that, and then, but I don't, I don't really understand where that even came from. No. So it's important that we we watch out. But anyway, going back, so to verbally abuse a Muslim, then that is fist. Because remember, you said it could affect your iman, it could it could affect your deen, it could it could decrease your deen. So iman is affected. Right? Because if a Muslim goes from yani, good iman to fisk, this is indicative of a decrease in iman because sins decrease your iman. Right? So to verbally abuse a Muslim is fisk. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَقِتَالُهُ And to kill a Muslim, right? To fight, a, to fight against a Muslim and to kill him is what? It's kufr. It's kufr. Because if, if, if verbal abuse is fisk, then how would you, how else could you describe Murdering him or killing him. It's kufr. Man. This is from one angle, the early they mentioned. Right? Another angle is that because and when you kill a Muslim, this is imitating the kufar in their actions. Because it's the kufar who fight against the Muslims and who kill the Muslims. This is what the kufar do. So when so when a Muslim does that, then they will have imitate the kufar in this characteristic. Man. So this is is kufr. A person would have fallen to kufr of actions. Because they would have done an action of kufr. You with me? Okay. Now, if the person in their heart believes that it's permissible to kill this Muslim or to kill Muslims, then that what? That becomes kufr what? I'tiqadi. That becomes kufr of belief. Now, that take them out of Islam. So, 
But, oh, but, but what's the origin of all of those things? How do you reach that point? Because of anger. So anger could adversely affect a person's religion. It could ver adversely affect a person's religion. Anger could adversely affect a person's iman. Now, and this hadith is a, is, is a, is a refutation on the murji'ah. Those who say that iman is not affected. That if you have iman, you have iman and that's it. There is nothing, sins do not affect your iman. That's a lie. What's the proof? This hadith. The Prophet said verbal abuse of a Muslim is fisk. So what? Iman was, was, was affected. And killing him is kufr. Iman was affected. Because iman decreases. And like the Salaf said, تَنْقِصُ حَتَّى لَا يَبْقَى مِنْهُ شَيْءٍ أو يَنْقِصُ حَتَّى لَا يَبْقَى مِنْهُ شَيْءٍ that Iman will go down until nothing remains from it. It could decrease until it depletes and is no more. Persons outside of Islam. Now, so it is incumbent that we that we recognize and we know that, and that we know that yani, things have causes. So we understand a little better about this particular narration. Al uh, Hafid ibn Rajib al Hanbali rahimahullah Taala he mentions he says had the Rajul طلب من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يصيه وصية جامعة that the Prophet صلى الله that, that that this man asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to give him an an a comprehensive advice the خصال الخير for the characteristics of good نعم ليحفظها so that he may memorize them عنه, so he may memorize them from the Prophet ﷺ. why? خشيتن, because he was scared that perhaps he won't memorize it Why? because the khisal of khair the characteristics of good are so many so he wanted a, a, a comprehensive uh, uh, advice because there's so much good that could be mentioned if a lot is mentioned then what happens and you forget it so he asked for a comprehensive advice, something that he can hold on to. Now, something that he can hold on to. For Wasahu and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him the advice, and la yabbab, not to become angry. And then the man repeated, repeatedly asked his question to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yani, yuraddidu alayhi, and the Prophet وسلم, he kept telling him the same answer. And for this reason, we understand that anger it is the source of evil, or I don't know how else to explain it. It brings all evil together. Because anger is the root of all evil. The root of all evil. Now, the anger is the root of all evil. That anger with them within itself, all of the evil, all of the nasty things could be linked back to anger. Could be could be linked back to anger. Naam. Wa anna taharruza minhu jima' al khayr. And withholding oneself and controlling oneself when one becomes angry, then this is what? This is the root of all good. This is the root of all good. Naam. And then al Hafid ibn Rajab. He mentions, he says, وَلَعَلَّ هَذَا الرَّجُلْ الَّذِي سَأَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هُوَ أَبُوْ دَرْدَى He said, and perhaps the one who asked, perhaps the man who asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, it was Abu Darda, رضي الله تعالى عنه. نعم, he said, perhaps this was Abu Darda. Uh, Darda. Why? He said, فَقَدْ أَخْرَجَ الطَّبْرَانِ Because of Tabrani, he brings a hadith, من hadith Abi. Darda from the hadith of Abu Darda, where Paul, where Abu Darda he said, "Qul tu ya Rasulullah, asaru messenger of Allah, dulni ala amalin, yudhilni jannah." That Abu Darda he said, "O messenger of Allah, point me to an action that if I do it, will enter me into jannah." Now. Point me to an action that if I do it, it will enter me into Jannah. Do not become angry. 
and you will have Jannah. Meaning what? What does it mean? Don't become angry. It means what? To avoid the things that will make you angry and do not expose yourself to the things that will incite your anger. Now, avoid the things that will make you angry and do not expose yourself to those things that will incite your anger. And it also means. Once you become angry, control yourself. Once you become angry, control yourself. Now, so controlling ourselves from anger and avoiding situations by way in which we will get mad, this is this is this is this is clear. Now, this is clear that in it is good. So once so in other words, we have to become wise and we have to be honest with ourselves. If there are things that we know anger us, right? then we should avoid those things. Likewise, from good interactions with our brothers, and especially between spouses, is that we learn about each other. We learn about those pet peeves that each one may have, those things that may incite anger in, in, in another, right? And we do not push those buttons. See, a lot of times, especially with the spouses, they utilize that knowledge incorrectly, right? The spouses, they use the knowledge about each other wrong. They use it to push each other's buttons. They say things that they know will anger the other one because they're looking to hurt the other one. They want to hurt their feelings. So they say things that they know are going to hurt their feelings, knowing that if their feelings get hurt, they're going to get mad and they're going to respond you know, to the end of it, right? Or they speak to them in a manner that they know they, that they don't like. Why? Because they're trying to make them mad, unfortunately. Unfortunately, right? And then they cry boo-hoo when their plan works. You try to make them mad. They got mad. And then what happened, happened. That's what you wanted, right? No, that's not. I just wanted to make them mad. I didn't want them to leave. Then why'd you make them mad? <laughs> right? I just wanted to make them mad. I didn't want to ask for a hula. <laughs> then why'd you make them mad? You understand? So they use this knowledge wrong. Whereas we should use this knowledge to not push the button. If you see that the person you're talking to is on the brink of becoming angry, then you stop the conversation. We'll give that in Sit. Sit on my Sit. Walk away. Right? Um, and you utilize the guidance of the Prophet وسلم, that if you do become angry, then you utilize these de escalating procedures. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He taught us So that we do not make situations worse This is, this is, this is wisdom This is hikmah Right? We have to know how to interact And to deal with one another We have to know how to interact And how to deal with one another Because in that we want what's good for each other And we do not want to open up The root of evil for each other So that they become angry Because then what, what, what happens Happens where he ever be left so, controlling ourselves when we become angry is important. And for that, Madahallahu, as Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, he mentions that Allah, he prays al kawlimin al ghayl those who control their rage, wal athina al nas, and those who pardon people. Allah Ta'ala praised them inside of the Quran. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa akhbar al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he informed us. أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدِ بِالسُرْعَةِ That the uh, one who is strong is not the one who can slam a person down and wrestle him down. The one who's strong is not the one who can overpower somebody else. Right? Because the reality is that that one is one who is weak. That one is one who is weak. When a person lets go all of their yeah, the, uh, um, control, they, they, they lose Yani themselves in anger, it's easy for them to defeat anyone because they have they have lost themselves. But this is the indication of a person who is what? A person who is who is weak. Why? Because the individual who is strong is the individual who could control themselves. This is the one who is strong. So therefore the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna yamliku nafsa and al so the one who is strong is the one who can control himself when he becomes angry.
That's the one. Now, so now let me ask you this. Remember, Sir Arthur said that what is meant by this is that you control yourself when you become angry. Remember that? Okay, what would be the dalil for Sir Arthur that you control yourself when you become angry? What would be the dalil? Is this hadith that the strong one is not the one who can wrestle somebody down, but the strong one is the one who can control themselves when they become angry? That's the one who is strong. So the Prophet وسلم, is telling us here in this hadith, the hadith collected by Al Bukhari, that what? That when we get mad, what we have to do? Control ourselves. Because the strong one is not the one who could hurt somebody's feelings, right? The strong one is not the one who could wrestle somebody down. And, 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 and put them on the floor But the strong one is the one Who can hold himself back while knowing That I can verbally yani, Outwit you That what you're saying to me Is bad but I can say I can say things make you cry But I won't Withhold themselves now, The one who knows you talking to me like this Or you interacting with me like this I can knock you out But they don't They control themselves that takes strength. That takes strength. To know what to say and how to say it, and then not say it. That takes strength. To know what to do and how to do it, then not do it. That takes strength. So it is incumbent that we withhold ourselves. So if you're in a situation, and this is very important, if you're in a situation and the person, and the person is not controlling themselves, the person is not following the advice of the Prophet, not following the guidance of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it is upon you to control yourself. It's not a justification just because they said I said. It's not a justification. Now, we're not talking about if you're physically being accosted or someone is attacking you. We're not talking about that. Because if you're being attacked, then you can defend yourself to stop the attack. We're not talking about that. But we're talking about the time where a person may be gesturing or posturing as if they're going to want a physical altercation, that doesn't give you justification not to have a physical altercation. You walk away, you de-escalate. Hey man, calm down, it's not that serious. You know what, you got it, no problem. And you leave, you leave. How many people have been killed over a parking spot? Really, over a parking spot, over road rage. Someone cuts you off, you're trying to merge. Is it really, is it really that important? Just let them go. Yeah, you saw the parking spot first, you had your, you had your, your signal light on and they came and they took it. Okay. What you what, what you gonna do? You're gonna get out and beat him up because he took your parking spot? You know what's gonna happen? He still has your parking spot. Now the authorities have been called. Now instead of picking up milk and eggs from Walmart, now you're being booked downtown and charged for assault and battery. Cause he took your parking spot. Boo hoo, so what? Right? So it's a coming that we control ourselves when we become angry. So it is upon an individual. Sheikh he says, وَعَلَى الْمَرْءِ إِذَا غَضِبَ أَنْ يَقْضِمَ غَيْضًا Is that if he becomes angry, he has to subside his, his rage. He has to control his rage. وَأَنْ يَسْتَعِيذَ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ And that he has to seek refuge in Allah from the shaytan. And this is from the prophetic Protocol of de-escalation is that when you become angry, you feel angry, then you say, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir-rajim." You seek refuge in Allah from the shaytan. Ma'am, this will dissipate one's anger. Ma'am, this will dissipate one's anger as it comes in a hadith that has been collected by Al Bukhari. Ma'am, also from the ways in which we de-escalate. The Shaykh he mentioned, and yet Lisa, Al Yatbajir, is that you sit down or you lay down. That you sit down or you lay down. Ma'am? Now, I mean, of course, depending on the situation, if you're in the altercation with someone and you become angry and you just sit down, typically that's going to stop it. Right? Especially someone who's not familiar with the Sunnah, they'll think you're crazy. I'm arguing with him, the guy just sits down. I'll keep going, he lays down. They're going to back up. You're going to say, you know what? <laughs> it's fine. 
<laughs> okay, right? But this helped dissipate the anger. The early man they mentioned the, 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 the wisdom in this is that the standing position, you are poised and postured to physically do something. When you're standing, you're in a position to physically do something. When you're standing, you're in a position to follow someone, right, into that next room still arguing. Maybe you don't want to physically do anything, right? But you, you walk in behind them still arguing, still arguing. But if you're sitting, it removes that possibility of striking them physically or to follow them and continue the, the argument, the argument. And it's also a physical indication to the one that you're having an altercation with they're trying to control themselves. Let me be reminded to control myself. Especially when you're in, engaged with a Muslim. Right? This is a reminder to them. Oh, he must really be mad. He sat down. Okay. Let me leave you alone. Right? Or you lay down. If, you, if, if sitting down doesn't do it, then you lay down. As it comes in, as it comes in the hadith, that has collect, been collected in the sunan of Abu Dawood uh, and Abi Darda. عن أبي ذر عفوا عن أبي ذر أن الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا غضب أحدكم وهو قائم فليجلس فإن ذهب عنه الغضب وإلا فليضطجع that when one of you becomes angry then and he is standing or she is standing then let them sit down if the anger goes away then that's good. You, you need not take any further step. And if not, then lay down. And if not, then lay down. Now, because this will help you to control your anger. So these are just some basic, some basic protocols to de-escalate. The first of those, man, um, is to be quiet. من كان يؤمن بالله ويوم الآخر فليقول خيرا أو ليصمت. What believes in all the last day? Speak good or be quiet. Man, speak good. Speak a word that's good, and a word that will lead to good. Cause see, what it means to speak to speak good doesn't mean just what you said was was good and true, but it means that its repercussions are true. Or 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 or, or, or excuse me, that its reper that its repercussions are good. Now, not just that what you're saying good within itself, but that it will also lead to good. Because you can tell somebody the truth, and the truth is good. But that truth may hurt their feelings, which may cause the situation to become worse. Correct? Now, you can't say, well, I just said the truth. Yeah, but you know it was hurtful. You know it was hurtful. So why would you say that? So it has to be good within itself, and it has to have good outcome, good consequences. Now, this is what is good. So the Prophet is telling me, say, either say what is good or don't say anything. So when you're in a situation and it's, and it's a confrontational type of situation, then the best thing is to what? Is the first, first step, be quiet. Be quiet. Control your tongue. Control your tongue. The second step is to utilize your tongue, meaning control your tongue from lashing back, but instead use your tongue to seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan. That's what's important to say. Not to respond to what they just said, but to seek refuge in Allah from a shaitan. That's what's important. The next step is that if you're standing, you sit down. If that works, you're good, you're done. If not, then what? Then you lay down. If not, then you lay down. Now, obviously, you may not be in a situation that you can do that. You might be in front of, might be on, a, on, on, on the front of your house, on the street. So how are you going to sit down in that? In that? Are you going to sit right there in the middle of the street? No. Then you walk away. You go somewhere you can sit down. Right? You leave. Go somewhere where you can sit down. Sit down. Lay down. If that's what it takes. Right? But these things are very important because there's so much good that will be achieved when we control our anger. And there's so many situations that will be de-escalated if we take control over ourselves. Now, and this hadith, the last hadith that was mentioned about if you're standing and sit to the end of it, this hadith, the, the Shaykh mentions, uh, Sahih, Rijal, Rijal, Muslim. It is Sahih, and the men of the chain of the, uh, the men of the chains uh, yani are also found in Muslim. 
yani, meaning these men of the chain, they're authentic and they're found in uh, Muslim. Now, or trustworthy, rather, let's just say, and they're found in Muslim. Um, three things that we benefit from this hadith that the Shaykh he mentions, Mimma Ustafadu, Min al Hanif, he says is that Hirus al Sahaba al al Khoy was the Sahaba's diligence in, 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 in chasing after good. Now, the Talib had al Sahabi al Wasiyah. من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم due to the request of this Sahabi to ask for a comprehensive advice that will benefit them from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم now, now listen where are we from this the Sahaba Subhanallah Salaf أين نحن من هؤلاء where are we from them now they used to ask the Prophet وسلم, about those things that will benefit them profoundly. Right? It wasn't about just any old, you know, things that weren't relevant and so on and so forth. They would ask the Prophet وسلم, about things that will benefit them. Obviously, we cannot ask the Prophet وسلم, anything directly because he has died. وسلم. However, his inheritors, the Prophets, now, oh, excuse me, the, the, the ulama. The ulama, the ulama, the ulama, they are the inheritors of the prophets. Do we exercise this same type of thing with the, the ulama? That we ask them about things that will have a profound impact upon us, upon our religion? Or do we squander those opportunities to ask them about things that are not even relevant anyway? Now, now don't get me wrong. There comes a time when we have to know about certain people. Because they are dangerous and their danger potentially may reach us. Right? So in those cases, now we you know you ask Sheikh, what about so and so? So yeah, because it's 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 an issue that affects you. Correct? But no problem. But how unfortunate is it where there are opportunities and instead of having the situation in the Methodist where you can ask the Shaykh these type of things that will truly benefit the Muslims, it becomes this person, that one, this one said, that one did. What about this one? What do you say about that one? Should we sit with this one? Should we avoid that one? Should we boycott this one? So on and so forth. Yeah? And it becomes a detrimental to the communities. Why? Because in some of these communities, the people that are being warned against are people who are irrelevant to the general masses of the people. And what's the proof of that? Is that a lot of them only come to know of the existence of the person being warned against by way of the warning. Whereas before that, they didn't know the person existed. They, they, they didn't listen to them. They didn't have any, any works by theirs. They didn't know they even existed. You know how many people have come to me and say, who's so-and-so? Who's Sheikh so-and-so? I say, why are you asking about that? Oh, because brother's over here warning against them. So then what's the benefit they warned you from? You didn't even know who he was. You didn't take from him, you didn't learn from him, you didn't even know he existed. So why are they telling you about him? There are other things they could be telling you. You, 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 you understand? I mean, subhanAllah, how many communities do we have like this where, you know, you go to the match, they can tell you who's on and who's off it. Right? But the basics of the people's religion of what they really need in their everyday life, they don't know. The Prophet, the, 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 the Prophet used to teach the Sahaba the dua of istikhara. Of making a decision, it was it was very important, very stressed, right? We make decisions all the time. Do we know this du'a? Do we know what it means? Do we have understanding and reflection of it? Reflection of it, but we make decisions all the time, so we need it. Should I should I'm going to travel over here, take this job, marry this one, right? Go into this uh, business deal, whatever. We we're always in need of it. The afkar of the of, 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 of the morning and the evening. Wherein there's protection for us from the shaitan. Do we know them? Do we know them? But we need it daily. If you say in the evening, you have, you, you have protection to the morning. You say in the morning, you have protection to the evening. So you need it two times a day. Two times every day. Do we know them? We don't. But you can tell me about Sheikh so-and-so. Cool. Nobody read his books. Nobody listen to his lectures and so on and so forth. But you can tell me intricately why we don't take from him. Okay. But you know what? We didn't take from him anyway. So what's the point? We didn't take from him anyway. So why are you warning me about taking from him? I didn't take from him anyway. 
right? And I'm saying this because, not just out of nowhere, I'm saying this because you have, we have lost people because of this. When I mean lost people, we have lost people to the point where some people stop practicing Islam because there's too much irrelevant things like this going on. What they say is too much. So they leave Islam. Why? Because they was never really taught the basics that, that they'll be able to maneuver and to hold on, right? When it comes to the affairs of Tawheed, the affairs of, yani, you know, uh, Sunnah, what is Salafiyah, so on and so forth, they don't know that. But they know we should take from this one, now we don't take from that one. This one was good before, now he ain't good no more. You know, every day is something new. We're dropping somebody different. So they've been brothers to say, you know what, that's, that's how it is. That's, that's how the Muslims are. I'm out. I don't want to do with this. I had a brother tell me directly, straight up. He said, you know what? Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. I am not going to leave Islam. He said, but I don't want nothing to do with y'all Salafis. <laughs> good. That's what he said. That's what he said. All because of somebody got warned against that he liked. He really didn't understand. He didn't have any knowledge in the, in the, in the manner in which it was presented was... You know, crazy. That's what he told me. He called me, he said, yo, what's going on with this, this, that, and that? I tried to explain the best I could, being that he was already exposed to it. He said, man, I'm good. Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim, but you know what? I'm going to do job. So these these are just food for thought. There are things that we have to know inside and out. Because that's what's You have to know that inside and out. This question is going to be asked in our grave. Are we prepared? Do we know that book inside and out? We know that, we know that inside and out. Christmas Shubahad, we know that inside and out. Right? Rasulullah Sunnah, the Imam Ahmed. We know that inside and out. That's our Aqidah. That's our Minhaj. Do we know that inside and out? No? But you want to talk to me about something? You understand? No, we got to be constant like the Sahaba. They used to ask about things that will benefit them and have an effect on them. Ala kulli Secondly, التحذير من أسباب الغضب is to have caution from those things which will incite anger. Have caution and staying away from those things and avoiding those things which will incite anger and to have caution from the effects of anger once anger has reached. Once you become mad, you have to control yourself, control your tongue, control your limbs. If you're standing up, sit down. To reference the law from Shaytan. If if sitting down doesn't work, lay down. So on and so forth. Right? De-escalate, de-escalate situations. And also, we see that the repeating of the prohibition of becoming angry, meaning control yourself when you're angry. Avoid those situations that will incite your anger, uh, and the like. Then this points us to the fact. That this advice was extremely important because the man asked more than once, Oh, Sini, give me advice. And the Prophet Sallallahu said each time, Do not become angry. He asked it again. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Do not become angry. He asked him again. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I become angry to the end of the times in which he asked him. Each time the Prophet Sallallahu answered, Not become angry. And again, in closing, not becoming angry. What does that mean? One more time. It means what? Control yourself. Control yourself once you become angry. Also, what? Control your actions. Control the, right, control your actions. But also what? To avoid, the that avoid the things that make you angry. And? Do not expose yourself to things that will incite your anger. Right? So avoid those things that you know will make you angry. Also, avoid situations that potentially could expose you to that which makes you angry. And if you become angry, control yourself. Now, and also the protocols. Once you become angry, once you do become angry, angry hits. What are, what are those de-escalation, those de-escalating protocols? Or protocols of de-escalation? What are they? The first one is to do what? Before that, though. No, I was be there. Was seek refuge in Allah. Before that. Close the mouth. Be quiet. And then use the mouth for good by saying. Now, seek refuge in Allah. Now, seek refuge in Allah by saying, I'll be lying in the Shaitan Rajim. But, and then what? Sit down. If you're standing, 
sit down. If you sit down and it works, that's good, right? You're done. But if it doesn't work, then, you, then what do you do? Yeah. Then you lay down. Now, then you lay down. And then the Shaykh he goes on to get into the next um, hadith. Uh, but inshallah ta'ala will say that until the next time. فنتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله عليه وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا